Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Lion's Table. Let's take a moment to enter into the presence of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let God's word, which is truth, fill us and give us strength. And let us contemplate his great love for us, his sacrifice on the cross, his mercy, grace, and promise of eternal life through Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The word who was at the beginning was with God and is God. It is this time of year we remember what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Son of God, did for us on that cross. It is interesting to read God's word with new vigilance, that is, staying awake to truly witness the power of God through his Son, in order that we may see how the entire creation fell and how it will be rebooted in the one scene that we fail to appreciate, and that scene is the situation in the Garden of Gethsemane. Indeed. Let's read in the book of John, starting in chapter 18, starting at verse 1. After Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley, where they entered a garden. Now Judas, his betrayer, also knew the place, because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a band of soldiers and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees. They arrived at the garden, carrying lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, knowing that all that was coming on him, stepped forward and asked them, Who are you seeking? Jesus of Nazareth, they answered. Jesus said, I am he. And Judas, his betrayer, was standing there with them. When Jesus said, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. So he asked them again, Whom are you seeking? Jesus of Nazareth, they answered. I told you that I am he, Jesus replied. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word he had spoken. I have not lost one of those you have given me. We read that Judas, who is shown to us as the serpent, standing in the garden with Jesus, and Judas, his betrayer, was standing there with them. When Jesus said, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. The snake, condemned to crawl on his belly again, instantly put to the ground. Yes, first Judas was standing, as we read in John 18, 5, like the serpent, in Genesis 3, then after Jesus speaks his word, G Judas falls to the ground. Chapter 18, verse 6, the original curse of the serpent. In Genesis 3, the serpent is cursed to the ground by God. Here, it is Jesus' action. This tells us, folks, that the power of God is in Jesus because he is God. Jesus the Word, who was at the beginning, was with God and is God. In the scene at the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus bloodlessly defeats this new Satan, Judas, by his same words that brought the entire creation into being. John also indicates in chapter 18 that the Garden of Gethsemane scene alludes to the original garden scene by indicating that there are swords of fire, found in uh, 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 chapter 18, verse 3, like the flaming swords of the cherubim in Genesis 3. Once Adam and Eve were cast out of the garden, the Lord God stationed cherubim on the east side of the Garden of Eden, along with a whirling sword of flame to guard the way to the tree of life. Amen. And in case you're wondering what we're referring to here about the swords being in chapter 18, 18 verse 3 we're referring to in Genesis also where there were flaming swords to keep out those from the way to the tree of life when we read in John 18 we read that officers and the band of soldiers with Judas came with swords and fire as the way to the tree of life that's interesting to guard the way to the tree of life. Why? 
so that Adam and Eve can not eat of it any longer? We most often assume that, and yes. You see, they were not, though, and cast out of God's creation, but the Garden of Paradise, where other divine beings also I existed. I mean, after all, Satan was there, and Eve must have known of him to so easily submit or to be unalarmed by him. There are many who delve quite deeply into this, and at some point in the future we too will, but not now. Let us again pay attention to the phrase, to guard the way to the tree of life. We believe that Jesus is the way to the tree of life, and is the tree of life. Just like it says in God's word, Jesus is the way the truth, and the life. Such truth was not unknown to Adam and Eve, but it was not theirs to possess, to own it as Satan desired to own it. And let's consider to keep the way of the tree of life, showing that life and salvation were not to be had, again referring to as a possession, unless the law <clears throat> and justice of God were satisfied, and that they were not to be expected on the foot of men's work, but only through Christ, the way, the truth, and the life, that no happiness was to be looked for from the covenant of works, now broke nothing but wrath and vengeance, and that there must be another way opened, or there could be no enjoyment of the heavenly paradise." This is what Judas did not realize. He wanted to possess Jesus in a way that he counted as a truth or way that he could be bought and sold as a possession. Just as Satan counted his right to buy and sell the truth and the way and the life. Well, thank you for joining us on this Lions Table. We hope this has been a blessing to you. And as always, we thank you for your prayer requests. We pray for you. And uh, anyone who sends a prayer request, we pray for. Thank you for your comments and your uh, messages. And as always, we invite you to join us again next time.